Okay, let's move on to item number 31. What is the y-intercept or intercepts of y equals x squared minus x minus 2? Is it negative 2, 2, negative 1 and 2, or negative 1, negative 2 and 2? Okay, speaking about y-intercepts, to make the long story short, um, we were thought that it's the value of y when x is 0. So for this case, let x be equal to 0. And if that happens, then y is equal to 0 squared minus 0 minus 2. That's why y equals negative 2. Letter A. Number 32. If x plus y equals 2 and xy equals 3, what is x squared plus 3xy plus y squared? Is it 7, 9, 13, or 18? What many do is that they really solve for x and y, but in this case, it is not necessary. Uh, what do I mean why not necessary? Because we could utilize algebraic processes to simplify, to find the value of this expression without necessarily solving for x and y. So first and foremost, we know that um, to make uh, a perfect square trinomial, the middle term should be 2xy, right? So that's why that 3xy will be written as 2xy plus xy. And so we have the expression x squared plus 2xy plus y squared plus xy. And what is my intention of doing this is that I could express this trinomial as a square of x plus y. So this is x plus y quantity squared plus xy. And now we can do substitution. x plus y is equal to 2 and xy is equal to 3. So this becomes 2 squared plus 3. 2 squared is 4 plus 3. We have 7. Letter A. All right. 33. If f of x equals 4x squared plus 3x minus a, and f of 3 equals 5, what is a? Is it 30, 36? 40, or 54. From here, um, we know that f of 3 is 5. So we will replace all x's here with 3. And the value of this expression will be equated to 5. So you have 4 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus a and equate that to 5. 3 squared is 9, so 4 times 9 is 36, plus 3 times 3 or 9 minus a equals 5. Then 36 plus 9 is 45, so we have here, my, and then this 5 was subtracted both sides, and this negative a become positive a on the right-hand side, and that gives you the value of a, which is 40, so letter C. 34. If y varies directly as the cube of x and y equals 64 when x equals 2, find y when x is 5. Is it 125, 250, 500, or 1000? From here, since y varies directly as the cube of x, then we could actually set up the equation y equals k times x cubed, where k here is the coefficient of variation. Since it varies directly, that's why x cubed is found in the numerator, but if inversely, then it should be found in the denominator. But we are given the condition that x is 2, then y is 64. So we will substitute it here with the intention of solving for the value of k. So we have 64 equals k times 2 cubed 
2 cube is 8, so we have 64 equals 8K. And dividing both sides by 8 gives K, or the constant of variation, or coefficient of variation, as 8. Since we have the value of K, which is 8, so we will replace this one with 8. So your equation now is Y equals 8X cubed. And with a given, with x equals 5, we will determine the value of y. Then by substitution here, so you have y equals 8 times 5 cube. 5 cube is 125. So you have y equals 8 times 125, or that's y equals 1,000. Letter D. Thirty-five. What is true of the graph of the line y equals 3x minus 5y equals 15? Does it rise to the right, falls to the right, horizontal or vertical? And so the same thing is we have to get the slope this of this equation. Um, in my case, expressing it in slope intercept form, I will subtract both sides by 3x. So we have negative 5y equals negative 3x plus 15. And solving for y, we will divide each term by negative 5. So y is equal to 3 fifths x minus 3. And you could see here that the coefficient of x in this form is 3 fifths. So this is our slope. And since the value of your slope which is three-fifths, is positive, then the graph is a line that rises to the right. Letter A. If it's negative, if it falls to the right. If, it's, if the slope is equal to zero, then it's a horizontal line. But if it is uh, undefined, then it's a vertical line. 36. A fraction has a value of three-fourths. After adding one to the denominator, the fraction had a value of three of uh, this is two thirds rather. Okay. Okay. We saw some corrections again. The fraction had a value of two thirds. What is the sum of the numerator and denominator of the original fraction? Is it 14, 16, 18, or 20? Others can do this by trial and error. Um, but for now, I will be using algebra. So let 3x over 4x be the original fraction where x here is the GCF of your numerator and denominator, by the way. Take note, if you divide the x's, it will become 3 fourths. So this is the form of a fraction whose value is 3 fourths. But if we add 1 to the denominator, this becomes 3x over 4x plus 1. And this now will have a value of 2 thirds. Okay? So from here, we will employ again the cross multiplication or multiplication property of equality. So I will multiply the 3x with the 3. So that's 9x. And equate that with the product of 2 and 4x plus 1. So 2 times 4x plus 1 will be 8x plus 2. Subtracting both sides by 8x, you have x equals 2. So x now is the GCF of your numerator and denominator. And so to determine the original fraction, we just have to uh, multiply 3 times 2 and 4 times 2, which is 6 over 8. And if you could check, 6 eighths is 3 fourths. If you add 1 to the denominator, it will become 9. 6 ninths is 2 thirds. So this is indeed the original fraction that we are looking for. And 
adding the numerator and denominator of the original fraction. So we have 6 plus 8, which is 14, letter A. 37. Find the x-intercept of y equals 2x minus 4. Is it negative 1, 0, 2, or 4? So for the x-intercept, um, in let's make it simple again. It's like the value of your x when your y is 0. So for such, we will let y equal 0, and you will have 0 equals 2 raised to x minus 4. Adding both sides by 4 will give you 4 equals 2 raised to x. And this is now an exponential equation. And 4 could also be expressed as base 2. So we have 2 squared. We know that 4 is 2 squared in base 2. It's equal to 2 raised to x. And using a similar reasoning last time, if they have the same base and the two expressions are equal, then their exponents are also equal. Hence, it follows that 2 is equal to x. Letter, therefore, your x-intercept is 2. Letter C. 38. Find an equation of a line with slope equals 3 and passes it passes through 1, 4. Is it y equals 3x minus 1, y equals 3x plus 4, y equals 3x plus 1, or y equals x plus 3? What do you think? So we learned from the past that if you are given a slope and a point to determine the equation of a line, we may utilize y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1, which is also called the point-slope form. So 1, 4 is your x sub 1 and y sub 1 respectively. Your m is 3. By substitution, you have y minus 4 equals 3 times the quantity x minus 1. By the distributive property of equality, so you multiply this, and uh, the left side is copied equals the product of this one, which is 3x minus 3. And adding 1, I mean adding 4 both sides, gives y equals 3x plus 1, which is letter C. 39. Find a linear equation whose x and y intercepts are 4 and 7 respectively. Is it 7x plus 4y equals 28? 4x plus 7y equals 28? 7x minus 4y equals negative 28? Or negative 7x minus 4y equals 28? Now, if you are given your x and y intercepts, uh, A here, by the way, is the x-intercept, and B is the y-intercept. And uh, so this is positive 4. Okay. So if you have A equals 4 and B equals 7, I believe uh, we have to recall this form, x over a plus y over b equals 1. This is what you call the intercept form of a line. This is usually useful to find the equation of the line given the x and y intercepts, provided that none of them is equal to 0. Because if that happens, then uh, it becomes undefined. The expression becomes undefined. So with that... We have x over 4 plus y over 7 equals 1. And multiplying both sides by 28 to clear off fractions because the choices are in standard form. Then this gives you uh, x over 4 times 28 is 7x. 
y over 7 times 28 gives 4y equals 1 times 28, which is 28. If you answered letter A, then great job. 7x plus 4y equals 28. 40. In what quadrant is x always greater than y? Is it quadrant 1, 2, 3, or 4? If you answered quadrant 1, we know that in quadrant 1, it's positive, positive. But x is not necessarily greater than y. For example, if I have the point 1, 4, 1, 4 is in quadrant 1, but x is less than your y. So it's not. Letter B has, uh, in quadrant 2, it's negative, positive. Clearly, your x is always less than your y because negative is always less than positive. For quadrant 3, both are negative, so it's not still an assurance that x is always greater than y. For example, um, negative 5, negative 1. So negative 5, negative 1, so x is less than y. But in quadrant 4, the coordinates are positive, negative, and x being positive is always greater than y that is always negative. Hence, letter D is the correct answer.